and good to see you all here today. Thanks very much for, for your time coming along. Um, so yes, yeah, so I um, work for CEPA, Scottish Environment Protection Agency, and in um, January 2012 now, I joined the Scotland's Environment Web Team. Um, we have a delivery team that comprises of a wide range of expertise on science, on data analysis, spatial data, web development, um, communications, project management, and that team really complements itself. Um, and we work together with our colleagues and our partners to deliver the aims and ambitions of the Scotland's Environment Life Project. So what I'd like to do today, as Paula alluded to, I want to take you through the journey that we've been on over the last three years as part of the Life Project. Um, and the journey we've taken to get to where we want to be um, in towards becoming the trusted gateway to everything you want to know about Scotland's environment. That's no mean feat there, just that, that broad statement. So it really started from the uh, seeds of an idea back in 2010, um, when it was being increasingly aware that there's so many organisations involved in monitoring the environment, there's so much data out there, I think as organisations we're very data rich, we can often be quite information poor in terms of turning that data into to something and using it as widely as possible. And a lot of this information was scattered across many different websites. So from a user's perspective, where you want to engage with and use environmental data, which really does underpin so much of what we do in terms of analysis, policy making, legislative making, prioritisation, identifying actions going forward, it's where do you go to find that, that data? Um, and you know, what's the trusted and, and, and sources of that information? So what we wanted to do is create a centralised gateway to data information published throughout Scotland. The, the project that we were looking at was very much um, aligned to the INSPIRE directive, which was around creating a spatial data infrastructure, encouraging um, improved sharing of environment sorry, environmental spatial data across the public sector, but also facilitating better access by the public to, to data. And this is also very much aligned with the, the creation of the Scottish spatial data infrastructure, where a lot of Scotland's public sector um, spatial data was published. We also wanted to tie in with the emerging movement around environment, shared environmental information systems. And that was really where we started, things were starting to move away from paper-based reports to a system where information management is really as close to the possible as source as it is. And we make that information available, sorry, available to users in much more open and transparent way. And also when we started looking at horizon scanning, there was such a rapid pace of technology, not just in terms of technology and software development, but how the, the technology that's available to, to, to citizens, to our customers, and how people use that technology to interact with and find information and data. We wanted to make much better use of that um, in terms of um, achieving our ambition to becoming the gateway to information on the environment. So out of the seeds of an idea grows a project. And out came Scotland's Environment Web. Now, its long-term intention was to present a wide view of Scotland's environment, and phase one was setting up the infrastructure for the website, bringing together descriptions of the environment, and Nathan's alluded to it really was the, the place where we published the 2011 State of Environment Report. And in November 2011, a new website was born. Um, and this really was the start of, of the Scotland's Environment Project going forward. So we had the 2011 State of the Environment Report, we had around 50 map layers on, on the maps, which was, which was a great start. We had a search for library documents um, and some quick links to other information. So a lot of potential, but it created that web space that we could go and innovate and, and um, identify new solutions going forward. Around the same time as the, the website was created, we had approval from the European Life Funding. Um, and so a new phase began on our journey in phase two. So in December 2011, we had phase two of the LIFE project starting, and we had four main objectives to delivering that LIFE project. We wanted to develop and create an inclusive partnership programme. We wanted to bring together key data providers and key data users um, to, to develop the Scotland's Environment Web project. As I mentioned before, we wanted to help promote the expansion of a shared environmental information system, and that was how Scotland as a, as a, as a member state can, can share more of our information to the European Environment Agency and to other member states um, in terms of data sharing, but also creating a, a much stronger environment, shared environmental information system across all the data publishers throughout Scotland. 
Providing better access to data and widening the use of data information helps to improve understanding and also feeds into better prioritisation of actions. And also, it wasn't just about the website, it was very much about engaging with the public, providing access to high quality online information, engaging the public in discussion, monitoring and action to protect and improve the environment. So behind every great project, we have a great partnership. And I think we've had thanks today to all the partners involved. Um, but it's true, I mean, we couldn't have got to where we have today without the partners. And Scotland's Environment doesn't publish its own data. It harvests data from other organisations that publish data. This is only ever going to be as good as the information and data that we can, we can get from our partners. We also wanted to make sure that what we were developing under the LIFE project was going to be a longer lasting legacy um, to, to, to provide a, a resource that we could all use. So you really need to engage with the people that you want to work with to make sure what they're producing, what we're producing, what we're developing is going to be useful to them and it's going to be a benefit to them. And it's not just those that are on the steering group and the management group, but there's a whole other network of, of partners that we're trying to engage with in terms of data producers. And this really is just a flavour of the whole range of organisations that we're working with. And what we're trying to do is take the data and information that's published and transform it into something that gives it a much wider user base, um, a much greater profile, um, and in extending the reach and influence of what we're trying to do. Data. Scotland's environment is data hungry. Um, what we want to try and do through the kind of gateway portal concept is significantly increase the amount of data and information that can be accessed and viewed through the website. So the whole premise of Scotland's Environment Web is to, to provide this gateway. I like to think of it as a kind of shop window as well, to say, well, OK, I'm, regardless of who publishes information, I'm interested in a particular environmental topic. So I come to Scotland's Environment Web, I type in my particular interests, and I can find across the board from a whole range of sources um, and organisations what information is available, where I can get it, and who I need to go to to get more information. We've grown from the 50 data sets that we started out with to over 300 spatial data sets now, which is, which is fantastic. Um, and we're developing tools, both for data visualisation and mapping, which I'll come on to, um, basically to turn um, some of the raw data into much more usable formats. And the journey that we're taking is now very much aligned with the Scottish Government's open data strategy, and that's the open data strategy that was just published in February of this year. Um, and essentially what we want to try and do, aligning with the open data strategy, is, is making data much more easily discoverable, accessible to anybody that wants to use it and freely available to use. And very similar to what Scotland's Environment Web does, open data really wants to make help pay people make better use of data and it really does help improve public services that are on offer. We want to deliver wider social, environmental, economic benefits to more innovative use of data and also it helps in terms of our accountability and uh, transparency in terms of making that data more widely available. Again, as noted before, we wanted to try and um, go along the route of the encouraging the shared environmental information system. And that's where we're moving away from single purpose data publication to publishing data, collecting data and publishing at source and getting it out there in an open data format that other people can do things with. So essentially we have our partners as the data providers. Um, we want to using standard data uh, formats and linked data, um, obviously driven through the Scottish Government Open Data Strategy. There's a whole range of different applications mm. and we're going to hear more about the journey that CWEB has been on that open data journey at the Open Data Workshop later this afternoon. Um, and just pointing on, I think it was Dave's comment about the hackathon, um, this is where this fits really nicely. So what Scotland's and Rob are doing um, in the next couple of months is we're actually engaging with university students to say, for, give us your ideas in how we can look at, for example, um, analysing new data, data analysis, new data mashups from data from different sources and what new analysis do you come up with. Um, getting graphic designers, game designers involved in terms of with this data that's available, can you come up with new ideas to help people engage and interact with and, and understand the environment? Um, and also in terms of product designers, say, you know, um, and maybe app developers, can you come up with new equipment to collect data, um, new apps to collect and record data, really to engage with Scotland's citizens? So 
we're just dipping our toes into the hackathon arena. It's I think it's got a huge potential. We've heard of the successes of the Envi um, Edinburgh University. And I think if we can really make a go of this one, it could be a really exciting journey we take on in terms of tapping into new creative minds um, that are kind of out with our comfort zone, I think, in terms of how we develop new ideas so far. In terms of improving effectiveness of policy development and being able to target and prioritise um, measures to, to address the various environmental challenges, um, the, the, being able to find data but also get information on that data is absolutely critical. And what's really important is how people use data. We want them to use it to inform, to understand, to decide and actually ultimately to behave, so to change behaviours. And these are some of the, the, the points that Scotland's environment is seeking to develop. We want to streamline access to multiple sources of data information providing that single authoritative view of Scotland's environment and how it's changing, present data from multiple sources in one place in a common format in interesting and dynamic views, helping people to explore new relationships in data is one of the kind of areas we think is really quite exciting. As I mentioned before, um, getting the public engaged and involved um, in discussion and action. And in terms of in, uh, objective four of the project, engaging with Scotland citizens, there's been a lot of work in terms of engaging them in debate about environmental priorities, trying to understand what interests them, and actually what was quite interesting, what we think the public understand the, about the environment can be very different to what they actually feed back, they understand and what really interests them, and getting them involved in monitoring action education, and the workshop this afternoon with Paul and uh, Stuart, um, around engaging young people in citizen science will give you a flavour of the kind of work we've been going on in that area. So we had all this work going on in terms of uh, getting new data, developing applications, writing the state of the environment report. But essentially, you can have a website, but if no one uses it, it's kind of pointless. And we really need to start thinking about who are our users and what do our users want? And what was interesting in the process we went through with Abertay University and did extensive user engagement workshops, what we thought users wanted and how we thought they interacted with data on the web was actually quite different. Um, but what was really interesting is we got some really good feedback and that fed into the design of the new website. And we had workshops ranging from members of the public to community groups to uh, students um, to policy to the agency. So it's a really good cross section, and we kind of gave them exercises and scenarios to say, okay, we want you to find this bit of information about this topic and just let them free on, on, on the, the web and try to understand how they search for information, how they interact with information, what was good and bad about the data information that they found along that journey. And then we also got them involved in some um, design work in terms of the key features they liked about Scotland's Environment Web and some of the design, how, what they might want to see as part of the design elements. So some of the key feedback that they had, they wanted to view trusted, authoritative um, data information. So the default position for most people is go to Google, search what you want on Google. But from the Google research um, uh, listed items, they weren't quite sure who was publishing the information, was it the most up-to-date information, Who's, what were the, was, it, was it quality information, was it trusted? So by virtue of the, the partners that were involved in Scotland's Environment Web, um, they really felt that they knew what they were searching and finding on the website was trusted and authoritative. They want to search and find information quickly. Basically, if they can't find it within two or three clicks, you can forget it, we've lost them. So getting them on that journey, they can get them to that point of interest quickly and get them to read the information both within the Scotland's Environment website, but also ensuring there's that connectivity with other related websites, the websites of our partners um, and other associated sites. They also want to be taken on a journey of discovery. So there's an element of, well, I'm interested in this, so I'm going to go and look for it. But there's also, you want them to help take them on that journey. Well, actually, I didn't know I was interested in this. Or I didn't know that information was there and kind of widen their horizon of, of what's, what's available. Much more images, much less text. I think that was quite an interesting lesson that we learned, particularly for the State of Environment Report, where the previous website was a lot of text, um, quite related to our kind of usual way of writing science publications, policy documents. Um, so you can see that reflected in the structure of the State of Environment Report, where it's snapshot bits of information. You can get a snapshot. You can read more if you choose to. Much more image-based. Uh, people also want to interact with the data. They're interested in the data. Um, and the tools that can take, you know, I'm not a data analyst myself, so spreadsheets give me the fear, but some of the tools we have in terms of data visualisation that instantly turn 
thousands of rows of complex scientific data into graphs and presentations um, is, is, is great in terms of quick analysis and interpretation. And the localised view, so our postcode search, people want to know what's going on around them. One of the most widely used tools on the website is a postcode search. Where's my house? Where's my community? What's going on in my community? So doing a lot more work in, in the future about how you know, we can take things like the National State Environment Report make that much more relevant to people in the local community and the local neighbourhood is where we want to go in the future. So who are the users of Scotland's Environment Web? Um, this is one of the things we found quite challenging when we had the life bid because when we wrote it back in... Um, 2010. We wanted to be everything to everybody. There's so many different stakeholder groups and partner groups. It actually, I think, to some extent, led to a bit of confusion about well, who's the website aimed at, who the product's aimed at. Um, so going forward, we really want to start homing in on our target audience. And that target audience is those who are seeking to get a broad overview of the multiple aspects of Scotland's environment and also start exploring those interrelationships. They could be members of the, interested members of the public, Journalist professionals, and when I say journalist professionals, it's those that are looking for that broad overview, so they might be considering the different aspects in relation to environmental policy, environmental assessment, but also those that may have a specific interest but want to see that specific interest within a broader context of the environment. Um, also things like community, third sector groups and education sector. Now, that's not saying we're not going to help those that want a more specific um, more technical data view. They're very important, they're very great users of data, but what we'll probably do, we can't be all things to all people, and we don't want to kind of, for them, have dumb the website down too much, I suppose, because they have quite different needs in terms of interacting with the data. So we want to basically take them on a journey and help signpost for information that they're most interested in. And we want to create a kind of family of websites, both our partner websites and other daughter websites, that will get them to where they need to go. So in 2014, we had our new website, and basically we were, it was structured around taking people on a journey. So getting informed in the state of Scotland's environment, understanding the data that underpins that assessment, getting more interactive with the data, with your data visualisation, understanding your local environment, um, and not just data tools that we ourselves, as Scotland's Environment Web, publish, but also providing a recommended resource list of a whole range of different data analysis tools that have been published by our partners. Um, not only understanding the state of the environment, we really want to encourage people to get involved in the environment, get involved in discussing your environmental priorities, getting involved in action and observing um, the environment and um, engaging young people. And then we wanted to get communicating. Huge shift, even since writing this project bid, in terms of the role of social media, um, instant communication, in terms of how people are sharing information, how people are finding out about things. So really kind of getting to grips with that angle in terms of how we can collectively get key environmental issues out there and engage people um, in understanding um, the environment. So some key features of the, the website going forward, you obviously have the State Environment Report um, that was published on the 5th of June. Underpinning that, we were doing some work around the indicators and data, so making much more visible and accessible and linked to the State Environment Report is the actual raw data that underpins it. Um, you'll hear about in the spatial uh, mapping tools workshop um, this afternoon um, how we've developed um, new tools and increased significantly the functionality of our, our mapping tools, not only to view map data, but also developing tools that inform key uh, business decisions for particular sectors. Data visualisation, again, there's a Spotify workshop this afternoon about how we transform data into more usable graphs and images, much greater use of things like infographics to explain um, environmental issues. Um, Paul will talk about hopefully the Project Finder and the role of Project Finder um, as part of connecting volunteers with projects, um, environmental action, citizen science projects. Mobile apps, they're, they're taking over the world. <laughs> but there's some brilliant environmental apps out there, not only in terms of finding out about your local environment, but also helping to collect data and extending our, our monitoring network. Engaging young people <coughs> in discussion and youth competition, promotion, and mentioned social media. And that little graph in the corner really shows how we want to start growing that family of websites. We have Scotland Soils, and I think we have Willie Towers here with any information or questions you've got about the Scotland Soils website, he'll be here to answer any queries. We have Scotland's Aquaculture, and we're doing some work with National Biodiversity Network on a, 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 a biodiversity-related daughter website around Atlas for Living. The, the potential is huge, and the good thing about daughter websites is, is, is they, they differ because they maybe have provided data publishing platforms, so where there is an issue where there's no one natural data owner, partners can come together 
create a daughter website on a specific environmental theme and basically publish the data but you can benefit from Scotland's environment by sharing the, 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 the templates, the business processes, the branding and help that user on the connected journey and sharing environmental information. So what? This is the kind of question we get asked. There's so many environmental websites out there, so why should I bother going to Scotland's Environment Web? What's in it for me? Why should I bother? Um, and there are a range of benefits, I think, to both users and um, data providers alike. Um, and these are just a flavour of some of those. There's greater transparency and accountability. I think from the partners, helping them to tap into audiences they hadn't actually been able to tap into before in creating that wider network, um, increased profile, but also wider use of data. And that really helps to extend the reach and influence collectively we all have. <coughs> this centralised source of evidence, again, you don't have to go across many different websites to find what you're looking for. You can get to the ones portal, you can get to the information you're looking for quickly. And basically using data to inform decision making. Um, and transform complex data. And I think going forward, we want to help people get that more personalised view of my environment, my place, and what is it doing for me. So going forward, Scotland's Environment Web, we still want to innovate, although that's becoming increasingly difficult with a fast pace of change with things, and even just keeping up is, is challenging enough. But as a, as a the public sector partnership we have, um, we are innovating just by, by keeping up with, with the world out there. We want to carry on demonstrating and very importantly sharing our learning, sharing our experiences and knowledge um, and that's around more collaborative work and we want to create a web of data providers, data users, we want to share knowledge and data, make much better value from it, have this user journey of connected websites, um, connectivity with information and importantly not just put data out there but really create a network of environmental scientists, observers, and most importantly, stewards. And that can only be to the benefit of the environment, the society, and our economy. So what I would say is please take a look at the website. We're always looking for ideas and comments and feedback. So let us know what you think. Um, give us any new, new ideas for new data you might have or new applications you might have. And please uh, don't hesitate to, to get in touch. Thank you, Joe. Okay, we've got a few minutes um, for questions to Joe about the journey, and then you'll introduce the workshops yep. after that. Alex Ramage from Transport Scotland. Uh, it's fabulous the visualisation uh, that you've put in. How are you uh, meeting the needs of the visually impaired community? Very good question. So we do try and um, we do on the website do an accessibility review um, of, of the information. We do try and incorporate accessibility issues. Um, what I would say is any comments that we have in terms of how we might be able to improve that would, would, would be welcomed in terms of the visually impaired community. And what we're also trying to do is maybe support some of the, the, the visualisation tools with other forms of, um, I suppose, explaining some of the data and information. So, for example, some people who can't read lots of text with some of the help text on the applications we want to try and do a very quick... Um, sound bites and, and video type user guidance journey not just in terms of how to use the tools but how to understand the data um, so but any comments you've got on how we can make any improvements would, would, would be really helpful thanks for the comment hi joe thanks that was very good uh, alex kinnan from the scottish wildlife trust i know the seua and the state of scotland's environment report has a lot of marine information in there um, and then also the scotland's aquaculture website sits under the SU web platform. But parallel to all of that is also Scotland's Marine Atlas, Marine Plan Interactive, and Scotland's mm -hmm. Marine Planning Tool. Is there any plans or appetite to bring those different strands closer together and essentially avoid duplication? Um, I think the point is you don't have to necessarily bring everything under the one tool. From a user's perspective, they just want to get to it quickly. So there's no point in us duplication of placing a fantastic tool like the National Marine Plan Interactive. But what I think we could do um, is help people get to that very quickly. So from Scotland's environment where we could helpfully bring more traffic to things like the Marine Plan Interactive tool, but also the Marine Plan Interactive tool reciprocally link back to Scotland's environment web. So what we found is people don't necessarily care where things are published as long as they can get to it quickly and easily. So I think our challenge is, is how we can help people get to tools like that. And we don't necessarily have to bring them in. What we are interested in is any element of data sharing between the respective tools we've got to help people see marine data in the context of wider environmental information. And likewise, we can signpost people to marine data when they want that more specialised look. I think that's, that's the journey we're going to be taking. Thank you. 
Peter Singleton from SEPA. Joe, I maybe put you on the spot a bit here, but I wondered if you wanted to say a little bit about the future. So what SEPA's plans are over the next years? Okay, in quick plug. <laughs> I'd just like to point out that uh, Peter is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank him kindly for that question. <laughs> There's a bucket outside to donations. Right there. <laughs> so um, in terms of the future, we heard um, before from James that SEPA um, have um, s continued their support to Scotland's Environment Web. So the brilliant thing is um, when the life funding finishes in August, this will not all be switched off. It will all carry on, and what we have is we're recruiting a permanent development team. Um, so what that does, it brings certainty to our uh, partners and people publishing the data that where they feel um, they're in discussion about, well, if we're looking at data uh, information applications, where best might they sit, either on our own websites or maybe want to collaboratively work with Scotland's Environment Web, that certainty is there that they can um, be confident that their investment will, will continue in the future. And that's what we want to do. We want to kind of grow Scotland's Environment Web to be the gateway. And it's getting that critical mass of information, helping people on that journey, um, helping people more on that journey of discoverability. So at the moment, I think in terms of the website, it's great if you know what you're looking for, but we need to help people more find um, some information. But also what we want to do is try and create um, this, this family of websites and this shared environmental information resource and that might be making better connections to new um, existing websites or creating new daughter websites. So we're working with a management group for new ideas um, and that might require new partnerships, it might require new funding, but essentially we have a, a, a foundation in Scotland's environment web that I think is a great platform for us to build on. Oh. Well, I've got time for one more very quick question actually. I think. Uh, hi there, Adam Florence from East Renfrewshire Council. Um, one of the main things I found, I suppose it's just in any council with constraints on money and stuff, is getting people with different sort of kind of specialities together to actually create policy uh, in a better way that can get ba management buy-in, really. Because um, the problem we have is that we're more greenhouse gas specific. Um, I was trying to kind of get some communication between Resource Efficient Scotland with this, and I was just wondering, is there anything that you, Scotland's environment, are doing with Resource Efficient Scotland to get more engagement with sort of kind of local council workers, mm -hmm. um, to get them more involved so everyone's on the same page, so mm -hmm. it's easier to put policy forward, but also marry that towards eco-schools initiatives as well, you know, for children as well, because I find that the more difficult thing is, is to get people in education, uh, other sustainability officers or anything, if there is in a local government, if there's money, but um, overall to kind of marry this, maybe with Resource Efficient Scotland a bit better, mm -hmm. so we can work together to kind of get people more engaged, because I find that that's not really happening. Yeah. Thank so you. on the eco schools side, I would recommend Stuart. Are you here? Do you want to wave your hands? So Stuart McGrath is um, somebody that Scotland's Environment Web and Education Scotland. Uh, we funded a post, and a lot of what Stuart's doing is creating new education resources for environment linked to the eco schools topics. And we've got new web pages to be launched uh, very soon, which will provide a lot of that information. Um, and actually, I don't know if you're going to the, the Engaging Young People workshop this afternoon, but you'll certainly hear more about that this afternoon, or take one of our business cards and we can get contact from you and we can certainly put you in touch around that. Um, on the local authority side, yes, we absolutely want to be doing more with local authorities and developing um, the tools that will help local authorities bring these different specialisms together to create that cut of your local environment, your local environmental information. One thing we found challenging, though, is with all 32 local authorities, everyone does it slightly different, <laughs> and it's how we get out there. And one of the ideas we've got is to kind of pick some kind of champion authorities to kind of test the water, um, get them as kind of champion benchmark authorities, and we can encourage others to do the same. So if you're interested in working with Scotland's Environment Web and you've got ideas around Resource Sufficient <laughs> Scotland, it'd be great to hear from you because, you know, you know more about how local authorities work than probably we do in SEPA. So any advice you can give us on how best to engage with, with councils in that forum would be, would be really helpful.